grateful when everybody participates. <laughs> <laughs> well, for more than a year, we have been reviewing the stories that we find in the Bible, specifically the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, and we're attempting to see them with fresh eyes. We are, as the book title suggests, we are reading the Bible again for the first time. And as we read and discuss, we are evaluating the different lenses, the different perspectives through which we see these stories. And we are acknowledging that these are our stories. They are deeply embedded in our collective consciousness. A few weeks ago, I began a series based on the stories about Moses and the Exodus. Our series title is From Slavery to Freedom and From Freedom to Fulfillment. And we draw on writers and teachers like Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore and his interpretations. We've discussed Reverend Bob Brummett's book, Finding Yourself in Transition, which uses the Exodus to discuss the change process. We often resist change because it confronts our fears of the unknown. We acknowledge that very few of us have learned how to deal with change in healthy ways, and we know that change is not a quick fix. It's not a quick fix, but a voyage of discovery. We've talked about Reverend Evan, uh, Ellen Debenport's book, Hell in the Hallway. Reverend Debenport calls the wilderness the hallway, meaning that one door may have closed, but we have yet to find the next open door. The hallway can become uncomfortable, but it is also full of possibilities and the freedom of self-determination and self-awareness. The unknown wilderness is a necessary step if we wish to move on to the fulfillment of the promised land. As we read, we set aside our need for historical accuracy and attempt to discover the helpful practical lessons, the personal meanings, the metaphysical interpretations. We lay aside what the Bible may mean to others and we ask what these stories mean to us. What does it mean to me and my spiritual growth? What do these stories mean to us individually? The Exodus is about our transition out of the slavery of sense consciousness and the tyranny of useless and unnecessary suffering. I need to acknowledge that pain is unavoidable. None of us are immune. Pain is unavoidable, but suffering is optional. What is unavoidable is the useless and unnecessary suffering that we put ourselves through. We do it to ourselves. Our own minds, our own egos, represented by Pharaoh, keeps us in the bondage and suffering of an uncomfortable status quo, rather than moving forward to achieve the freedom of self-awareness, choice, self-determination. One form of this self-inflicted nonsense is our erroneous belief in lack, our belief in want and scarcity. This erroneous belief means that we do not see the abundant prosperity that is all around us. When I'm planning a Sunday morning service, I usually start with music. I get my music in first, and then I move on to other things. 
And I have most of my music in a rotation so that we don't sing the same old songs over and over again. This week I saw that our congregational song was My Source. We sang it earlier. This I know, blessings flow, filling every deep desire. It's a song about abundance and prosperity and trusting in God as the source of our many, many blessings. After planning the music, I look at the word. I look at the daily word and see what it's going to be. And today's daily word was also about prosperity. Well, about that time, I decided that today would be a good day to draw from Catherine Ponder's classic work, The Millionaire Moses. And if any of you, if none of you have ever read Catherine Ponder's works, they're amazing. The Millionaire Moses uses the Exodus saga to remind us that the Bible is the most excellent textbook on prosperity ever written. Reverend Ponder fills her works with examples of individuals who've used the principles of conscious living to bless and prosper their lives. And as we make our transition from slavery to freedom and from freedom to fulfillment, we become aware and we learn to apply the law of cause and effect that Catherine Ponder teaches. It's also known as the law of mind action. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. What we put out in thought, word, and deed comes back to us. Moses represents our awakening awareness of the law. Every effect in our lives begins with a mental cause. And when we choose, when we learn to choose our thoughts, we begin to choose the results that we experience. Because what we habitually think, that's what we become. What we habitually think, that is what we see in the world around us. The great cause of our bondage to the uncomfortable status quo of lack and scarcity is that most of us believe that other people have control of our experience. Other people control our experience. Other people can help us or hurt us. We believe that we receive our good from outside circumstances, from other people, from events out there. But our good, our many blessings, really come to us from God's presence within us. When we wake up to this truth, we can know and we can know that we know that we know that no one and nothing is against us. No one and no thing can withhold our blessings or take them from us. No person, place, or event can keep our blessings from us. The universe has unlimited good for us, and we can accept, receive, and experience our good whenever and wherever we choose. We left off in our story with Moses talking to Pharaoh, saying, let my people go. Exodus 7:13. yet Pharaoh's heart became hard and he would not listen. Our ego can be stubborn. <laughs> then God tells Moses, to confront Pharaoh by the Nile and strike the water with your staff. And the Nile will become, will turn to blood and the fish will die and the river will stink and the Egyptians will not be able to drink the water. This is the first of the 10 plagues. Now don't worry, 
I'm not going to go into all the plagues. <laughs> but the plagues we experience in life are the useless and unnecessary suffering that we put ourselves through. In the biblical writer's eyes, each of the ten plagues has a very specific symbolic meaning. Like most of the ancient world, the Egyptians were polytheistic. They had many gods. Indeed, the river Nile itself was a god named Happy. H-A-P-I. H-A-P-I. Happy. Happy was the god who brought the annual flood of the Nile, which deposited rich, fertile soil on the river's banks, allowing the Egyptians to grow crops. The Egyptians depended on the Nile's water and the annual flood for their prosperity. And when the Nile was threatened, so was their livelihood, their prosperity, their health, their culture. Each of the ten plagues targeted different Egyptians, Egyptian gods, just as the plagues that we experience target the false gods, the erroneous thoughts that we hold, thoughts of lack and limitation. Sometimes we think our livelihood, our abundance, or our prosperity, or our health, or our culture come to us from outside, rather than knowing that we receive our good from God's presence within. When we think our prosperity comes from a paycheck, we set up a false god. If something threatens that paycheck, it confronts our fears, our fears of the unknown. We lose faith and we experience a plague. The same is true of any desired good, but we can choose to see things new, a new way. The plagues that we experience in our lives, a lost job, a lost relationship, a health challenge, can shake up the ego. And that can help us let go of the mental status quo. And when we get sick and tired of being sick and tired and we want something new, something different, we want freedom from our bondage, we must first be willing to let that bondage go. We must become willing to change our minds and change our lives. We must know that no one and nothing is against us. No one and nothing can deny us our abundance or the calm peace of our souls. One of my 12-step sponsors used to say, lose a job, don't drink. Get a job, don't drink. Get married, get divorced, don't drink. When things go wrong, or they appear to get worse, what happens around us is not as strong as what lies within us. The plagues are a part of the process. They make it easier for us to let go of the slavery of our own useless and unnecessary suffering. We will know freedom as we learn to use the law of cause and effect, the law of mind action, and move from slavery to the freedom of our personal fulfillment, the promised land, where we have what we want to have, do what we want to do, and experience what we want to experience. God bless you all.
Well, this is our opportunity, yours and mine, to pour out the gift of God from within us through our tithes and our love offerings. And can we share this offertory blessing together? Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am joy-filled and grateful. Thank you, God. And you can send your gifts, your tithes, your love offerings to paypal.me slash unity Lincoln. That's paypal.me slash unity Lincoln. Or you can send your gifts through the mail or through a bank transfer by sending them to Unity Lincoln, P.O. Box 30209, Lincoln, Nebraska 68503. Or you can send, uh, you can go to our webpage at unitylincoln.org and there you will find a convenient link to donate via PayPal or use this little code right here to scan that on your phone. You can also help support Unity Lincoln by liking us on Facebook and subscribing on YouTube. And you for our church family. Together, Unity Lincoln is blessed to draw the people, funds, and all that is required for the health and growth of our community and peace in the world, heart to heart. And we are well on 